Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the January 20th, 2015 meeting of the Municipal Budget Committee. If everyone would rise and pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Hopefully this evening will be a shot meeting by our standards. <laughs> sure, it's at 10.30. Yeah, exactly. And we'll be able to send uh, Channel 22 home before tomorrow. Thank you for joining us tonight. Tonight is just a little wrap-up of some of the things at this end of the session. As you know, we had public hearing last week. Um, our number going forward to deliberative session has... Um, gone out to the public and was open for discussion. I'm sorry. But this evening we have a few things to do, but I'd like to start with our usual roll call around the table. <coughs> start over there. Joe Wibowski. Thank you. Dave Wood. Somebody grab it. Mike Pierce. Richard Renio. Brian Lapham. Jerry Zanoy here. Joan Rice, Secretary. Eileen Latimer. Mike Plouf. Stephen LeBron, Jones. Mary Louise Wolsey, Select Man Representative. Jim Lachlan. Bob Ladd. Thank you, everybody. Um, I see Norm is with us this evening. And we ended up with a little bit of a problem on Norm's end. Um, with the funding. So, Norm, I'm going to give you the opportunity to come up and talk to us. We can't change anything tonight. Any change on this would have to come at the deliberative session. Okay. But an oversight on everybody's part um, to make sure that you had money for a contract right. that's already been written. So we, if you would explain. Okay. We have previously gone to the to, to you, and we've previously gone to the uh, Board of Selectmen, and we have indicated that we have um, entered into a contract uh, with Mackinson and Company that there are fees associated with the uh, capital reserve funds that <clears throat> proposed legislation and, uh, and that was passed, H House Bill 297, which provides for the payment of advisory fees from the income <coughs> from the capital reserve funds. And the only other way they could be paid for would be an appropriation in the town operating budget if they were not, uh, if this bill does not pass. So when we spoke to you in the past, and you uh, approved the concept and the Warren article, we modified it to say that if the Warren article passes, then $1,500 that would have been appropriated in the expense budget would no longer have to be paid. The problem is that we don't have $1,500 appropriated in the expense budget or the default budget, and it is an obligation of the town to pay this. I'm optimistic since ultimately it makes sense for the bill to pass, the Warren article to pass, that this will not be an issue. But the way it's written right now, the Warren article is inaccurate because it's it's stating that $1,500 will be uh, not paid from something that has never been appropriated. So the question is, can you increase the budget, which is what I was speaking at at the public hearing, was to increase the budget by fifteen hundred dollars, and which would allow us to increase also the default budget by fifteen hundred dollars. Both of those items have gone past their, uh, their their due date, so to speak. So we're in a we're in a bit of a catch twenty two. So the only solution I see is January thirty first, and uh, coming to a deliberative session, asking for an increase to the budget of fifteen hundred dollars for this item. Otherwise, we'll send the bill to the town, and the town will have to figure some way of uh, uh, paying for it, maneuvering 
items within their accounts. That's it. Long and short of it. I don't know that you can increase the budget. I don't. You know. We cannot I, hear. Okay. Um, we cannot hear. This would have to be done at deliberative session. But okay. I just wanted everybody to be clear as to why I asked you in tonight. Yeah. Because legally we're stuck between that rock and a hard place on this particular issue that has to be corrected, and for that reason. <clears throat> I would suggest that we consider um, changing or finding funding in the budget for it to do just that, um, because this is not wish list. This is something that absolutely needs to be corrected, and I guess oversight on all our parts. Where we start, when we're talking about it as a contract, would have assumed it would have been in the default budget, but such was not the case. No, it was negotiated after the right. default budget was prepared, and, and it was so an oversight yeah. on just about all everybody's part that yeah. this was not there now there is a warrant article for it um, and that would be article 32 right and that's kind of like a rainy day protection <coughs> voting for article 2 will not double pay this if 32 passes and there is an amendment to the budget it'll only be paid out of one not right. both places and that is specified in the warrant article um, so, if anybody has any other questions, I'm going to start over here with Bob. I have none. No. Sorry. Okay. The ruling from DRA did not come down on this until December. So, it was never factored into the 2014 budget. Therefore, it would never show in the default budget. The article is certainly relevant because it gives authorization to the trustees of the trust funds without further action of the town meeting to charge their expenses uh, for the capital reserve funds uh, and so forth. Uh, so the article is written properly and it does say that if the money is in the operating budget and the operating budget passes that the trustees uh, will be okay and they won't be double dipping. I intend to move at the deliberative session to uh, place in your account, uh, technically what you have right now is wages and then you have your supplies and expenses. Right. I think uh, then, and Christy will know better than I, there certainly should be a third line inserted there. Leave the supplies line and stick the expenses down on the third line, which will be your $1,500. Right. Because this is ongoing, We'll never have to have an article of authorization for you to do this again, but this needs to be inserted in the operating budget. We're going to have a big problem and we're going to have the annoyance of continuing to put in special money articles every year if we don't have this in the actual budget. You, uh, the budget committee left the $1,200 in the Heritage Commission account uh, which is not going to be relevant because that uh, Heritage Commission basically is no longer functioning. So you have a $1,200 offset in the Heritage line. So there'll be an increase of 300 which isn't going to kill anybody. No. And I am prepared to uh, move that at the deliberative session, and I'm sure you will help and second me. And then we'll get the money right in the budget for you, and we will ask the public to support the operating budget. Thank you, Mary Louise. You're welcome. Thank you. Tim? I am prepared to oppose any addition to the budget the budget committee has already compromised on. <clears throat> budget committee passed the budget, and uh, I have spoken with some of the members who joined in favor of that vote, and they share my views, although not necessarily on the particular line items, they share my views that they wanted to cut it far more than, than, uh, than what it is. As far as I'm concerned, adding one dollar to that budget terminates that compromise that we've made. So I will oppose adding one dollar. Otherwise, we can just have one big budget committee meeting at the deliberative session. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mary, just so I understand, um, so Mary Louise, you're going to increase it by three hundred dollars? No, by fifteen hundred dollars okay, well, on the trustees' line. I know. Wait, wait. And you, then, just, you just said that there's twelve hundred dollars. And then remove twelve hundred from the Heritage Commission, which will have the deficit. It'll be an offset. Which, in effect, is, is adding three hundred dollars to the budget. Mm -hmm. Right. It seems like that's petty cash. That, but whatever. I'm not going to say anymore. Mm -hmm. Three hundred bucks is a bunch of money. <clears throat> no. 
not worth a lot of discussion okay. personally. I don't yeah, we don't need to go over every move and deliberative other than to say this was an oversight. Yeah, okay? it was. It was an oversight that needs to be dealt with because we're not conforming as far as the law is concerned. So that is the only reason why we've taken this one item and pulled it out to call, call some attention to. Jerry? Yeah, I, I, uh, I feel that there ought to be a line item in which we can move the money into, and it ought to be under the trustees of the trust funds. Mm -hmm. But I can identify many thousands of dollars yeah. to be able to handle this. Don't get carried away. This is not even a sniff yeah. of what right. I have uh, identified. So <coughs> I'll I, for down. one, totally looked through this thing and that's the reason why I left it. Um, oh, as far as the Heritage Commission, we voted to eliminate that. No, you haven't not yet. yet. Not yet. It's on a warrant article. But the money's still there, Brian. Okay. Well, like I say, I, for one, am not for adding any more money in. So, okay. thank you. Richard? No, no comment. Michael? I, I think Mr. Jones makes a valid argument, and along with uh, Steve, about adding money to the budget because uh, this was a uh, situation where I thought, personally, this budget was still extremely fat. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to have taken out probably another half a million dollars, and especially at least, and especially when we realize it's in the paper that we reduced it by 1.1, which is erroneous. We reduced it by 700 and some thousand. The selectmen suggested budget. So putting all that in perspective, if you want to move the heritage for $1,200 over to the the trust fund account, I have no problem moving $1,200, but I'm not going to add to it. I got a question. It seems to me if if any of these money warrant articles pass and we have a default budget, you've got the same problem. You have to find the money to to pay for the warrant articles. The other thing that disturbs me is there was an error on the part of the bookkeeper and the trustees of the trust fund are going to give the person a raise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a total different. What's a raise? Let's yeah, stay on, let's stay on this was, and not. There's no raises in the trustees. Of the trust the warrant articles are not paid out of the budget. Representative Wood, hmm? any questions? Joe? I agree with Mr. Jones, Mr. Pierce. I, I voted against it. And okay. As All far right. as moving twelve hundred dollars, it's just you moving it from one line to it's it's a bottom line budget. I think it's just playing cards. Thank you, Noah. See ya. Um, I I have a quick follow up. Uh, um, well, I'm sorry, well, but I'm, I'm sitting here as a member of the committee tonight. I have well, a quick you are, up. but you're out of order right now. Excuse well, me. I have. I'll second that. I have not raised that's my not a motion. <laughs> I know, but I'm making it one. <laughs> the discussion's here closed. To discuss. Excuse me, Mary Louise. Well, that's fine. The Thank public you. will take note. Okay. Moving on to the insurance. We're sitting here with the MS thirty seven and we need just a, a little bit of clarity as we're passing this around and signing it. And <coughs> I don't know if we can we can they hear Christy at home from in the back? Maybe you want to come down and join us, Christy. This might be a question for not, but there are members the of the MS7 committee. has the Board of Selectmen <coughs> recommended budget in one column mm -hmm. and it is labeled that way. And then it has the budget committee recommended budget in the other column. Right. The Board of Selectmen recommended budget that came forward to the budget committee was for twenty seven million five hundred and fifteen thousand and thirty three dollars. <coughs> right. When their budget was reviewed at the Board of Selectmen level, we did not have the insurance rates at that time. So they voted, I think I had inflated it by either five or seven percent, because that's our normal practice. Mm -hmm. um, because we don't know what the rates are going to be when the budget's put together. Well, we, under we understand that. That's not, and I don't want you to feel defensive about that. We're not questioning that. We know when we started we didn't have a rate. We got a rate midway through it. Mm -hmm. The question, I guess, is that we did discuss in Budget Committee yes. the fact that there was a reduction. Mm -hmm. The question, therefore, was we had assumed 
that a correction would be made by the selectmen to their proposed budget, mm -hmm. and you're saying that there would not be? No. In the default budget, though, it did have the lower amount because when the Board of Selectmen approved the default budget, I had the rates mm -hmm. at that time. And so um, the default budget, the ins health insurance line, was the rate that we're proposing is going to be the rate, assuming that everyone stays on okay. the plans that they're So what you're saying on. is once that selectman's budget was passed over Onto to you. us, yeah. no numbers in that budget would have been changed right. regardless of what came in right. Correct. afterwards Correct. on any line for anything. Correct. Okay. So that's why that that figure is is there. Right. However, just so people are clear, um, because that was part of the calculations too in reducing things um, on that proposed budget. Do you remember the exact dollar amount? Do we have that? For what? That <coughs> represented the... Uh, the... The reduction was $363,433 okay. yes. from the original proposed line to the default line. That okay. figure is not baked into their proposal line, which bothers me. So that proposal line shouldn't be 27515033. It should be 27151600. And I don't want to sign a document that's got a wrong number in it because somebody didn't summate... So make a summation on an Excel spreadsheet. She's saying saying it is important to note that the Board of Selectmen's proposal is at this point irrelevant. I understand that, but yeah. this is a document we're signing. It's got that number in it. That's but that's what the Board of Selectmen yes. brought forward, though. Okay, okay. So the that's budget committee. They didn't change it after they brought, they brought it to you guys. And that they couldn't make any changes to that. Right. Can it be made at deliberate session? No. No, does, yes, you don't sure. need to. Jury, that's what the Board of Selectmen submitted. Whether Fine. they did it rationally okay. or not is not the question. Well, All right. It is what that's they submitted. That's simply a factual okay, statement. It's what they sent forward to you guys, and therefore they didn't make okay. any changes after right. they She's passed their budget on to your. That's, okay. that's the question that came up, and before we send this off, I just wanted to make absolutely sure that that number is correct and it wasn't right. the adjusted number because the selectmen right. were given that 363, even though it was later and after the fact. It was before. They did not go back and adjust they their budget. Did not the go Board back of Selectmen approved it. their budget with the one time, and they did not go back and change it. It had already been passed on to the Budget Committee by the time I had the new rates. Okay. This is going to go back to the state and be filed, and five years from now, somebody's going to come up, pull us open, and, and look at that 27515 number, and it's an erroneous number. My guess is in the matter. past it has been the same care. because I think you're always waiting for the mm -hmm. health insurance rates, okay. and the, yeah. they don't usually have the health insurance rates when the budget goes to the Board of Selectmen. Yeah. All right. We don't usually have those rates until I don't, I don't the see I know. I, I don't know. Uh, that we have no, I don't think we have any argument okay. with that, that we do have some numbers that roll. It's, it's, you know, we talk about this as a moving target, yes. the budget, and there are things along the way that we have to be mindful of that are changed. <laughs> in this case, we absorbed that change in our mind and said with 363,000 less, than the proposed budget right there when you introduced that adjustment to us. I think that was the important fact and, and things that we considered. We're not seeing it in there. Just want to, I never, I've never personally hit on that before. Um, I just wanted to make absolutely sure that as we send this forward, we can send it forward like that, sign it, and I'm content with your explanation. Okay. And now we've done that publicly, so okay. we've gotten your advice. Don't go away. Don't run away. Is any, I want to give There's anybody else who has a question on that. Does anybody else have a question on this particular item? Just this item. I hope the newspaper has got the number straight. We didn't reduce it by a million one thirty-five nine ninety-three. It, that falls to seven seventy-two five sixty once the health insurance rate reduction is accommodated. Right. Okay. I think it's important for the Any questions to hear on that. this side? On this uh, this particular item. Well, just as the final, uh, I, all I want to know is what is the final figure that is going to be presented on the warrant at the deliberative session to the figure. public? That'll be our figure. That's 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 twenty six million three seventy nine zero four zero. Twenty six three. What is it? Three seventy nine zero four zero. Madam Chair. That's yes. the Believe operating budget the as that's the budget we made. That's here. the budget as proposed. Right. Yes. That's what's committee. going on the warrant. What is the default figure? 
$26,507,097? Yes. I don't have it in front that's of me, correct. but that's my that's big correct. guess. Excellent I memory. I see these numbers at night. <laughs> I, I think by, the, by this election, we'll all have this amount memorized. 26507 what? 097. Thank you. That's, that's the default number that's in the warrant. And then Relance. the other. What you sent out via email, which is the yeah, source of my question there, in a moment, as soon as, I guess, Mary Louise's turn next, so we'll be regaled with Mary Louise's <coughs> questions. All right. I, I just want to maybe focus a little bit on how we're phrasing this. The selectmen do not present a budget to you. The selectmen present a statement of expenditures and revenues. The selectmen are stating... <laughs> what they want for the coming year. It is not a budget. It is a request mm -hmm. to you. Absolutely. So I think it helps if we do that. Then the budget committee makes a budget with the goal of presenting it to the deliberative session. What comes out of the deliberative session is the final right. budget. Exactly. And I think it helps to focus on that. So we do not make mm -hmm. a budget. On this side of the table, just Mike, Steve. Tim. <clears throat> Just to follow up on Mary Louise's point for a moment. Only the legislative body, that is to say the town meeting, can make a budget. And since the budget committee is the only committee of the legislative body, mm -hmm. it is our duty to recommend to them a, a budget. budget. Right. And that's what we're doing is we're recommending a budget to, to, the, the, to the legislative session. body, mm -hmm. which happens to be commonly called the town meeting. But they are the legislature of the town. Thank you for clearing that, Mr. Jones. I like that. <coughs> now, uh, Much better than their previous one. <laughs> well, let's not be qualitative here. Uh, Is this on the Madam insurance? Chair. Uh, <laughs> well, Christie sent out a, a uh, PDF the day after our public meeting uh, with the budget numbers. Right? <laughs> and those are the numbers I was confirming with earlier. We're all on board there. But I have no default. This sheet shows no default budget line item. Which is look, I do see a default budget bottom line on here, but no line items. No, uh, it was in the uh, what you gave out in October. Mm. No, no, but that's no. dated. It's not potentially dated, I should say. Yeah. This is the one which you gave out, and it's it got about this is yeah, just this is that uh, was given out in October. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's it, not. It's it's that number, is that number unchanged from 26, October? Twenty six five zero seven zero ninety seven is listed on the default. Budget. Okay, so based on that number, this this committee had asked via its selectman's representative. And I understand that the request via that route, which Chairman Bean is always asking to use that route, was not acceptable and was requiring the chairman of this committee to send him an email requesting that our default budget line item needs to be reduced by a mere $31. And apparently the Board of Selectmen has not made that adjustment. Am I correct? They have not. Okay, thank you. Well, we, no we further questions. Even with our pathetic budget, we underspent 20 14 and no, it just goes to show that we tried to work with the Board of Selectmen on the smallest of thing, and they just put a deaf ear to us. Yeah. The entire committee just totally ignored. Okay. Gentlemen, Bob, Jim, anything on that? Okay, that's the first part of the insurance questions. The second part is on the monies. I don't have the exact figure in my brain. On the money coming back to us from... Uh, municipal Association. From what? From um, LGC. The no, the trust. Health Trust. Help me here. Health, Health Trust. trust. <coughs> Health Trust. Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember. 272,000? For this year, for 2015. Probably. For 2015. I'm not talking about last year's. I'm talking about 2015. Nothing's come in. In no. no. The question is. There was a figure. We knew how much we were going to get in 2015. Have you broken that down into the town's portion yet? No, we don't break that down until we actually get the funds, and they send us a sheet of who um, yeah. uh, who was on it as an employee yeah. and a retiree, Okay. and we break it out there. It usually has, I did figure out an average, and, and it's ranging between 60 and 65% of whatever the number is, is what's been coming back to the town in previous times but we don't know that until we get the first they send us a check then I have to request from them 
um, documentation on which employees paid in, how much they paid in, which retirees paid in, how much they paid in, what was returned to each of them, and then we give them like the 10% or 15% to the employee, and then the town gets the remainder of and that. We do, and then, we do understand, Christy, we don't get the entirety of that. Yeah. There was a date that was thrown out there if we wanted an insurance holiday. Have we responded to that? I think it was a February date. I'm under the impression that everyone will be getting um, the checks at some time in February, yes. Okay. No, but the, the insurance holiday is how we accept on the town's part our piece of it. No. No. And no. No. Not unless you choose it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Oh, I'm Have sorry. we chosen? I think it was a February date as a deadline. Mm -hmm. And the difference would be, one, it would go into the funds, all right? Mm -hmm. The other way, it, it would be we wouldn't have a payment due or a portion of a payment that would represent that amount. And if that was done, then it would do, reduce the budget that you have or it would give you more money to work with within the budget. If you took the insurance holiday rather than put it in <coughs> the reserves, that would be up to the board of selectmen. I know in the past they've chosen not to do the insurance holiday; they've chosen to have I the know, refund. But in this case, that would give you more money to work with when it does come in, because then you won't be paying that out of your insurance line. Yes. I think I trust those guys to do an insurance holiday. I have no idea. Well, how it's an option to I'm you, and I in my hand. Which and guys I, are you not trusting? I believe that the date is is coming up, so it might be based on consideration that you you now have less money than than you re requested to to have in the budget. You might want to consider that for 2015. You'll be paying less out of an insurance line. Yes, that makes sense to me. You What's don't know it? what they're going to be doing if they think they're going to do an insurance mm -hmm. holiday. I have no idea how they're going to Well, it was right. either get, send I the payment. Already, the I thought you already had to decide. You made the point, I think. All right. I, and that, that's the point is, it's a possible source of additional funds, of and that's the point. That's, that's the bottom point. line. Yeah. Well, we get the funds one way or the other. One would be in a holiday, and for those who don't understand the holiday, my recollection of the holiday is the money would be refunded the town portion. <clears throat> I know that all, all that money is not the town portion, right. but the part of it that is for the town would be a payment holiday of sorts because that money would be used because off a payment amount, and we have all of our payments amo payment amounts within the budget, the proposed budget, mm -hmm. okay? So by doing that, what that may free up for you is that amount of money within the budget to do something else. Sure. Otherwise, we still get the money, but it goes into the unreserved, the fund unreserved funds. Undesignated fund un balance. Yeah, un balance. undesignated the fund balance. Funds. And yeah, it's it's there, but it may serve a better purpose if we possibly look at and again as selectman's representative, if we haven't already reached the deadline. And I don't think we have. I, I think no I want to say it was the. I'm sorry. We have not discussed it, so I don't know what um, the deadline. I, no I am going to throw it out there, um, unless somebody on this committee feels it's inappropriate that you possibly suggest from us that you consider that. Um, based on where we are, based on what we have to spend and how we go about spending it. There are some things that people felt were important and they needed a little bit more money and a little bit more room and this is one way of doing it that doesn't hurt anybody and doesn't come out of anybody's pocket. I think such consideration, Madam Chairman, should be standard operating procedure well, for the Board of Selectmen you know, every sometimes, year. Sometimes we lose track to dates and sometimes we lose track to numbers and it's easy to do because there are a lot of them that float around. All I'm trying to do is shed a little bit of light on some things that are still out there that can still be done. Mm -hmm. All right? And I, think you I don't have any more to no say problem. on that. I have I have to 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 wait. Floating money. In fairness, um, Joe, do you want to start down there? I, I agree, totally agree with what you're saying. Representative Wood. No comment. I have one question about how much do we anticipate getting at. Any ideas on that? There was a figure on it. I don't remember if it was e it was either in the 200s or the 300,000s, I believe. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. No question. I've made my I think Madam Chairman made the point. Let the selectmen of town manager talk about it, decide what they want. Well, at least there'll be enough room to pay a silver deck. I do have one. <laughs> 
point of <laughs> clarification. Uh, <laughs> That's for sure. You you had handed out a purchase order report at the public hearing just prior to the public hearing. It's another oh, agenda wait a minute. item. Is it on? Is it no, another agenda item? We're going to finish this one. Okay. It's not I just on want to. Okay. Just an accounting clarification I want to get. Oh. All right. I'll pass. Okay. Jim. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. I never will use my shoes. No, I, I wasn't present. No. Okay. Well, Jim and Jim, please. We have to sign up. You guys need to sign Okay. Now I'd like to move on to the Warren article that involves us. And Fred, that's not me, right? <laughs> well, I do, have, have, I do have a question. You know what? We might call you back in a minute for a correction. Okay. okay. What's wrong, Christy? All right. No chips. Budget. And Fred, this is this is abuse. a technical question. Uh oh. Citizen abuse. All right. Voter abuse. I actually. think I already know the answer to it, but I I have hopes for everything. This petition war an article involving us, and I want to make sure I get the right war an article number. Forty-eight. Yep, okay. number forty-eight of forty-nine. That was submitted the day before our last meeting, or day before the end, the petition ending, the public hearing. Yeah. So I know that our vote shows on money articles. Can our vote? Can we vote to recommend or not recommend this Warren article and have that show, or is that not appropriate? to answer the question. Um, the Budget Committee has the privilege of, of putting a, a recommendation on any appropriation article, but there's nothing in the law that allows you to do the other. Mm -hmm. The selectmen can put a recommendation on any article, okay. except zoning. So that's my understanding of how the law works. All right. Then we won't challenge. I would say we don't challenge that. So we won't take a vote, but I will like to open this particular article up for some discussion. And first of all, I would say, I don't know if anybody here was contacted on this Warren article, but it seeks to reduce the number on this committee from 12 at-large members. Our committee is 12 at-large members, and then we have three representative members, one each from the Board of Selectmen, from the precinct and from SAU 90. And those three members are voting members. Elected members. I'm sorry, yes, elected members. And they're all voting members as well. All right, I'd want that clear. Our representative members clearly have a vote in this committee, as well as a vote in their own arenas, whether it's selectmen or SAU. Hold that thought for a little bit. This petition, Warren article, looks to change our number at large to seven. Now, there has long been a discussion about reducing the size of this committee that many feel is a monster committee, and certainly it's one of the largest in the state, and certainly there are people who feel that the more input when it comes to making a budget, the better we are. And I have been among those, especially in the past two years, who think perhaps a slight reduction or a trial reduction might be warranted. But that being said, the more I explored it, the more problems I found with how you go about reducing the numbers. And two of the situations that complicate is the fewer people you have, the more significant each person's vote is. And you may not always have quite the majority. This is quite a democratic committee right here. We never know sometimes what we're going to get. And there's some lively debate. And it's never meant to offend anyone, but we don't always agree. 
by our own existence, the Budget Committee is not meant to agree, but to protect. Mm -hmm. So right there, we are meant to be contentious, and it says it right in the statutes. We try not to be, we try to reel that in and be as civil <laughs> as we possibly can. Sometimes we do a better job than others. Kind of like a loyal yeah, opposition, yeah, right? Yeah, something like that. Just to put a little humor and lightness to this. But when you consider our size, when you consider that this is almost like two towns in one, we have the precinct and we have the town. Some towns are very small. They don't need as many in number to represent all the different interests that go on in this town. We are a very diversified group. Therein lies my problem with what the number should be. The other problem is as you reduce numbers, do you keep your representatives with a vote and the legality? As is pointed out in the RSAs, it doesn't point it out and say it specifically. So that's open to interpretation. Fred and I have talked many times about that, and I don't know that we're any clearer today, Fred, than we were two years ago when we started the conversation. Are we? No. I think the part oh, I helped write the statute. Thank you. So <laughs> therein lies the problem again when you strip the number down to basically you can't get much lower than that in seven. So with all that being said, and all I've thought about, all I've tried to do, and all I've looked into so far, after two years of really looking into it, I haven't come to terms with it yet, and I'm pointing out the problems with this particular Warren article that would seek to reduce the number to seven. By people, I think I see maybe one person on here who has served on this committee, and this was not brought to our attention. I have had absolutely no input on this Warren article whatsoever. It came to us in the 11th hour so that it deprived this committee a conversation about reducing its own numbers and what we think. <clears throat> and might I remind people, we're the ones who serve on it, and we've been elected by the voters to serve on it, and I would hope at the very least our input on it would make some difference to whether people would vote for this or not. Um, the second thing that I see here is that, and I spoke to the author of this who said in his own admission if he could have eliminated the, the budget committee, he would have, but he found out that legally he can't do that. So. <laughs> that, that, is, that is a shame. So his desire was to, was to kill the only committee of the legislative body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I've passed it <clears throat> around tonight, and again, like I say, we've, we've gotten this in the 11th hour. We haven't been able to have um, much debate on it. But the word, Fred, and I'm not really addressing it to you. I'm including it in the conversation with you because I've spoken to you many times about possibly reducing the number. But in the, on this and in this Warren article is not a clear plan as to how that number would be reduced. I think mechanically this is flawed. Even if you were for the number, mechanically it's flawed in how you would go about reducing us. There are four of us up for re-election every year. So you would have a year where there would be no vote for the Budget Committee whatsoever Correct. on this, as well as going into a second <coughs> year. Yet, Mr. Page, in, in a conversation, he was unable to come tonight. In a conversation with Mr. Page, he said that his intention was that the entire Budget Committee in the year what would be for next year, for the year 2016, would be up for election. And I don't see that reflected here. So this article is clear as mud as to how you reduce us to, num to the number seven. And its intention, I think, is ill-spirited. And 
I wanted to bring it up. Have any discussion that you wanted to have? I think it's only fair to the people who serve on this committee to have that discussion. And I am, although I have been and may be in the future in favor of reducing the number on this committee, it will be with far more thought than went into this and um, for the strength of the community and not a whiplash effect because somebody didn't like something here. Um, so I am totally and adamantly <coughs> opposed to this particular Warren article. And I would like all of you to have an opportunity to speak on it, for it, or against it. Bob, would you like to start? I just did a little checking on the coast and found out that Seabrook has six at-large members and three appointed from uh, the school, the village district, and the boards of selectmen. Hampton Falls has no budget committee. North Hampton has seven members. Hampton Falls has no budget no committee. No budget committee, at least it's not showing on their website as being in well, existence. On their website. That doesn't mean they don't have a budget It doesn't committee. show on the town website. They're not an SB2 town either, I don't think. <coughs> that, that doesn't matter. Okay. No, it does. No, it doesn't. Moving right along, Northampton <laughs> has seven, four of which are elected. There's a representative from Little Boar's Head, the school and the select board. Rye has 11 members. Well, six can I ask you, are they voting members, the representatives? As far as I know, they all are. The statute is the RSA creating this reality does not mm -hmm. indicate they would not be voting members. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't say that they are. No, it That's doesn't right. say the at-large people are voting members. So it we just don't doesn't know. speak right, to exactly. the issue. Actually, it does. It actually says that the chairman will be voted upon by the majority of elected members. Mm -hmm. so Everyone sitting is an elected member. No, right. you're not an elected member. You're an appointed member. I'm an elected member. You're an appointed member to this body. Okay. All right. The, the statute Why is clear. It refers uh, to at-large members. No, the statute is anything but clear. And if you'd allow me to speak. And I appreciate Please. that, but I think the conversation between the two of you is exactly what I'm speaking to mm -hmm. here. Before we start changing it, we need to be absolutely sure on some of these points. Uh, but, Bob, I appreciate it. Please uh, continue. And Rye has 11 members, six at-large, one from Genesee's, one from the Water District, one from Rye Beach, a selectman and a school board member. I don't know why they didn't include the DPW. <laughs> you know, just, there's no entry. The bottom line is this is the largest budget committee of any of the Seacoast towns. And I think there's a sense it may be a little too large. The problem is how do you make it the appropriate size? And this could just drift off, you know, into the ether. If, if nothing is addressed, we could be talking about this five years from now. So at some point, I think either this committee has to get a control of the issue by creating its own recommendation or suffer the consequence of what might occur this year, a member of the public putting a, an article in to be voted on. Thank you. That's exactly how I feel. Well, I'm, I'm a little surprised we're even talking about it. Um, number one, I, I thought we dealt with budgetary items um, and dealing, picking one Warren article out to discuss it because some people may have a vested interest in it doesn't seem quite fair to me that we're even discussing it. But seeing that we are discussing it, um, <laughs> I, will, I will take part. Um, I'm not sure what the number is, but when I look back over the last year, I can tell you that we can certainly do with less members. Um, we took 55 votes last year regarding the budget. Of those 55 votes, 44 of them were either unanimous or had two or less people opposed mm -hmm. to what we voted on. We passed every budget nearly unanimous with when the department heads came in they were all hit with questions they all prepared to come in here 
they all sat here and took the questions that were fired at them. They answered the questions. They defended their budgets. Fifteen people had a chance to go round and round and ask them questions. <coughs> Eighty percent of those budgets that were presented here were passed by either a majority, excuse me, by either unanimous or two or less people. But the end result was, <coughs> at 10.30 at night, at one of our last meetings, a motion was made with maybe five minutes worth of discussion that wiped out the whole year, or the whole process, of all those department heads who took the time, of all 15 members who took the time and asked the questions, and we pulled the rug out from the whole process. I so you can do that, mm -hmm. if I could finish, mm -hmm. you could do that with a whole lot less than 15 members. <laughs> I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. There could have been three members here, and if that was going to be the final process, and if that was going to be the end of the committee, you could have done it with three members. You didn't need 15. If you're going to do it, in a method, and to use your words, a democratic committee, which I have some real ambivalence about accepting that term, if you're going to do it, then maybe, maybe the number isn't that bad. But I haven't seen it. I've seen this work could be done by a select handful of people, because that's exactly what happened this year. So I'm not sure. So I guess the, the point to vote on this is at the s deliberative session. So that's all. You caught on fast. I'm very impressed. Well, thank you. <laughs> I have to tell you. Um, you. You have to be careful because many towns in the state have no budget committees. And many towns, like Northampton, only have advisory budget committees. Do you know what an advisory budget committee is worth? Not, Not the paper it's printed on. Yes. Right. Hampton is, is and has been a proud MBA town. The voters of the town of Hampton voted in 1954 to make us an MBA town. That means the Municipal Budget Act. That means that we are an, a committee authorized to literally make the budget. We have teeth as a committee. I consider an article such as the one the chairman referred to to be frivolous. And uh, I think it's basically a type of power grab. I think it's insulting to the public in this community. And 15 members, 25 members, five members, for heaven's sakes, this committee can function and has functioned very well over 60 years. Maybe some committees aren't as sharp as others. Maybe some committees aren't as, as uh, proactive as others. But this is a tremendous asset to this town to have the Municipal Budget Committee. And I, I think uh, I certainly have no intention of voting uh, for any such thing as that nonsense. And I rather wonder at the motives of the people who are trying to remove uh, the public's access to the budget process. Mr. Jones. <coughs> Madam Chair, you may recall when I first uh, was elected to this committee, one of the first conversations you and I had was a discussion about the virtue of reducing the size of this committee, mm -hmm. as well as the associated vices. I mean, there were pros and cons to the question. It's, a, it's almost a philosophical one. And uh, there are pros and cons. And as we discussed it, it was like, well, we either need to improve our, our uh, ability to uh, be effective as a large group well, we need to lower the membership so that we can be more effective. At least that was that was the argument that I was putting forth to you. And, and, and the chair in this body has grown to be more effective. And I don't think we're as effective, Jim, as, as really we ought to be. But if you look at where we've been in, in the recent past, uh, I think you'll see that we've been much more effective. Uh, and as long as we're seeing continuous growth in that process, I see the, the, uh, the con outweighing the pro, because the con is exactly what you said. No matter how many elected members, as the law says, at-large members, it basically means elected members, mm -hmm. 
no matter how many we choose to have, we're still stuck with three appointees. Oh, better word there. And, and what? Better word. What do you mean? Stuck or no, appointees? Yeah. No, it's really not. Oh, representatives. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. You prefer. All right. Yeah, representatives. Stuck, yes, I do. Representatives of other boards. <laughs> not stuck with. All right. We're uh, <laughs> endowed with. Okay. There you go. We're endowed with representatives from other boards who appoint a particular person for us to be endowed with. Okay? And why is that? Because the law requires it. Ah, but why does the law require it, Mr. Be Chairman? Because the law is generated by the sausage-making factory called the State House. <laughs> oh, the law requires it so that you have instant access to the three entities. Well, it doesn't actually say standard. why in the law, so I don't know actually, that. Actually, it doesn't, Obviously. but uh, let's move on let's from move this on point. Mr. So, so let, let me, let me, let me keep continue going, here. Okay. Is, He's yeah. on a roll. I was. <laughs> <laughs> So I think it's virtuous, Jerry, uh, that we have a, a large committee from two points of view, one of which is it gives uh, a broad array of voices, which is exactly what you want to bring to bear when it comes to raising money. We are the only committee of the town meeting. <coughs> there is no other. And fr frankly, nothing can be done without it. And it is important whether you're SB2 or not, because if you're not an SB2 <coughs> town, then, then there's no such thing as a default budget. The full budget is argued at the town meeting. With an SB2 town, mm -hmm. you get a choice of A or B. And the budget committee is charged with producing the A, and the board of selectmen in this town is choose with choosing what will be B, namely the default budget. Now, just for the reference, 32, colon 15, Roman numeral 6, Bob. One of the members at large shall be elected by the budget as chair. The chair must be, therefore, a member mm -hmm. at large. Cannot be right. a, a rep. Elsewise, uh, otherwise. Right. And it's also noteworthy that the rest of this, which is just two, one sentence or two sentences more, the committee may elect other offices as seems fit, big deal. The next sentence says, a member at large shall cease to hold office immediately upon missing mm -hmm. four consecutive scheduled or announced meetings at which that member received reasonable notice without being excused by the chair. Right. So this gives a means for actually uh, kicking someone off the committee, mm -hmm. but only if they're an at-large member. Right. Or, and a, or, or, excuse me, the person that other boards have endowed us with as representatives, mm -hmm. we can't kick them off, no matter how bad they may be oh. in terms of their attendance or what have you. So there is, a, there is kind of a, a, a different treatment going on here in the law, as the law stands right now. And finally, I'll say this. There can be no motivation to reduce the members of this committee. As Mary Louise said, it was created in 1954, and it was created with 12 at-large members at that as time. As it is now. Okay? Yep. And the reason, in my opinion, mm -hmm. why they chose 12 is because they wanted maximum representation. Right. Because back in 1954, we had a much more active civic uh, population in this town. And they very much valued having a broad array of voices at this committee. And I see no, the only thing we need to do is make ourselves more effective, more efficient, and Madam Chair, you are making that happen, and we need to continue to encourage the Chair to make that happen. There's no reason at this time to reduce this committee. I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I'd get applause for saying something. <laughs> It wasn't your dissertation. I just had to say enough. Right? It was, it was the fact that you were going to shut up. <laughs> so you just got to work at it, Dick. You can get applauded, too. All right. <laughs> Settle down. I don't anyway. care to touch this piece of fly paper. Thank you. <sighs> Good for you. We've seen a couple more articles like this before. Uh, never to reduce the members, but to do away with the budget committee. The town has always supported it. I think it's a good process, and I think it it uh, brings a lot more information to the surface before we get to the deliberative session, and I'd be in favor of keeping it the way it is. Thank you. Jim, I just want to speak to you, and I didn't want to interrupt you while we were talking. So we're going to have a little bit back and forth here? No. 
I'm just taking my two minutes as we're going around okay. the table. This is the Irish say, if this is a just, private fight, or can anyone jump to in? To just make a statement. <laughs> I didn't do that with you, and I'd appreciate the respect back. Certainly, given in any given year and any makeup in the Budget Committee, and we've seen it, this is my 15th year here, consecutive year. Some people have been on and off and cover that distance, but this is 15 years for me. I've had some boards that have been very difficult to work with, some members very difficult to work with, some very easy to work with. Sometimes I've won on the things that were important to me the way I saw it, and sometimes they didn't, and those battles die, died hard. It's unfortunate that we got around to making motions at 1030 at night, but quite honestly, I thank all of you because this has been a dedicated group quite late into the hours where we really didn't look at the clock as much as what we had to do in front of us. The one thing that does happen during that process, regardless of the makeup of the board that sits here, is that when a motion is made, especially on those final numbers in review, the call is also made for any amendments. You would not rush through that vote, <coughs> any of you. And I know that it is difficult. The vote was 9 to 5. And having been maybe somebody who sat in the five and other times, that is, that's difficult to take. However, there were four times that an amendment was asked for. Four times when any member on this committee could have added 50 cents to 500,000 in and given an argument for it, I want to at least have you know that I did not rush anyone through that motion and gave everyone every opportunity legally possible to put an amendment and make a change in there. There were none. And as with things, as with dealing and where it pertains to this article, there will always, <coughs> no matter what board there is or what committee there is, be those who work a little bit more and a little bit harder than, than others. There have been years where we've had some people that, even though the guidelines that say four consecutive meetings, we've had people really try us where we were going back and checking because they'd missed like eight or ten meetings and we're trying to figure out if there were four consecutive ones in there. This has been a, a, a committee with very, very good attendance. But to gauge activity by a person and going forward to reflect that on the number seven. What you're saying is that we're going, if we go to seven people, we're going to get seven totally dedicated people who won't miss a moment <laughs> and make this their life. And my problem with the number seven is, in reality, that doesn't happen anywhere on any committee, no matter what the number is. Humanity will have it that some of us will do a little bit more work than some others. And that has to do with your life. This is a volunteer committee. We're not a paid committee. Where this is not a job. We volunteer our services, each and every single person here, some more active than others, but all in the spirit of what's right for the town. So I just wanted to get back to you on that. And. For the process, it has nothing to do with the number because that process will remain the same. Whether there's seven or, or 15, it'll remain the same where everybody is entitled to a piece of that last say in the argument. And there is structure for that. So thank you for letting me respond to you. Ellen, could, I, could I say something after all? What she said about attendance, <clears throat> if you think about it, the 15 people that are sitting here at this table, every one of us, and we come in and we probably put in more hours um, than any other committee in this in this town because our meetings run long. Mm -hmm. Four hour meetings are pretty much the norm, okay? And we meet sometimes very often twice a week. And everybody's here. Every person is here. So, and I think that says a lot about a committee. Mm -hmm. A very committed um, group of people 
that ask a lot of questions, that go through that budget line by line and ask. Every person has an opportunity to ask a question, and they usually do. And that's why we're here till 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> but every person that's here is bringing something to this table that's important. Okay, and that's my opinion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jerry? I do favor a, uh, by the way, uh, Mr. Jones, I am a rep from the school board, but I'm also elected to the budget committee. But we love you anyway. I got elected two years ago. To see the <coughs> yes, you yeah. did. So Jerry uh, actually got to choose which one he wanted, and he got us both. So we're not stuck with you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a stucky. <laughs> we're in dog with him. But I, I do feel we could be smaller and more effective. I do feel that way. I don't know if the number seven or eight, but... I'd like a number that rounds off to an odd number, so if we vote, we, we get a majority. Right. Seven and three is ten. Yes. Eight and three is eleven, you know. However, from my vantage point this year, very up close and personal, I thought the meetings were longer than they had to be. I thought the time to comment was really short, you know, because it would take a half an hour to get around this room if each person had two minutes. So the quality, the, 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 quali the, the, the quality of discussion, the depth of discussion, you really can't get into with 12 people, 15 people, in my opinion. Um, and um, so I, I would be, as important as the quantity, the number, is the type of person. You can't control that. We have to get a person who's, who's really to put the time, ready to put the time in, the analysis in, can offer up motions with analysis behind them. We need, that's as important as the quantity, is the type of person we have to have, where we reach conclusions through analysis and rationale. And to me, that's equally important as to the number of people. I do think that 15 is too big, much too big. And seven, I don't know, I mean, I, we can start talking about what this should be, whatever number, but uh, I'm gonna leave it at that. Thank you, thank you. Brian? Um. First off, there are only 12 of us. There's 15. Well, there are only 12 of us elected at, large. Were at uh, large. 12 plus the three we're endowed with. So. Under Article 31A, this entire budget committee was made to do things that the selectmen and other groups couldn't do, and that is to review the budget, to do go home, do the homework, look at things that maybe the Sluckman or other committees maybe missed or what have you. I think this is one of the most diversified committees that I've been on since I've been here seven years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the other reason that I like the size um, is one reason, well, one problem I have with changing it is what's the number going to be, as Jerry said. But one reason I like this committee is we have people with knowledge. We have Mike. We have Richard. We have Stephen. We have Mr. Pierce. We have everyone else. We have Dave. This is an extremely well-rounded group. And with all that knowledge and experience, I would hate to lose all of that because this is what being in Hampton is all about, and I think it works out great the way it is. Um, to reduce it, I just can't see a size, and who's going to get bounced out? So that's all I have. Frankly, I'm kind of puzzled as to why we're even discussing this petition article. It was put forth by a private citizen who felt that there was a situation that required some attention and requires some action. And Madam Chairman, when I hear you use words like that it was ill-spirited, that it is a power grab, we don't talk that way about excuse other, me, other excuse me. citizens. Mr. Rinya, I did not use power grab. Yes, you did. I oh, that wrote it down when you rep. said it. No. I did. Well, all right. When I hear I'm those guilty. types of comments. It came from one of our endowments. <laughs> my, my comments. <laughs> <laughs> questioning. And now I'm stuck with it. And, and, <laughs> now you're stuck with it. Yeah. Stuck with it. <laughs> and, and questioning what the motive was behind the, the signers of this petition. Uh, 
I asked the author himself. But he's not here to defend that. No, he's, he's not, not here to he could have come. reinforce this hearsay that you said that he said. <laughs> <laughs> right? He was invited, right, Madam Chair? Here were 25, 25 citizens yes, of the town was. of Hampton who felt motivated for some purpose that they feel it is necessary to reduce this committee. And I think possibly it's because of some of the past actions that they have witnessed of this committee, of some of the contentiousness that we have had, which, which sometimes is a good point and other, some other times it is not. Uh, I would just, to, at this point, reserve any further comment and wait for the public at the deliberative session to express their feelings in a more wider audience than just us 15 here of us battering this back and forth as to what our, our personal opinions are for a committee that we are serving on when we have not done this for other petition articles. Okay. That's it. All right. Mike, before, if you don't mind, and since, Richard, you kind of aimed that at me. Well, I mean, you made I will the tell, I will explain to you exactly why this is on tonight's agenda. This isn't any Warren article. This is a Warren article to basically cut the Budget Committee in half. Let me finish. It's not any Warren article. We will be not, we will not be taking a vote to recommend to go on, but we have every right to have this discussion openly, openly, all of us. You all have views. And as we've gone around the table, not everybody is on the same page. We all have a difference one to another, albeit maybe a little difference. And I think probably the biggest difference is what number? Do we stay at 15? Do we stay at 12? Do we go to 9? Or do we go all the way down to 7, as this Warren article is written? That's a discussion I feel the public needs before they get rid of a very useful tool. It's as relevant as anything else that we take up because people don't like our contentiousness at times because we ask questions, spirited sometimes, but we get answers. That is not a, a reason to dissolve a portion of the Budget Committee. Now, when I said ill-spirited, when I asked the question as to, you know, how did you come to this number, and the answer was, I would have voted to get rid of the Budget Committee entirely if the individual was here and was with us and was present and had even come to us and asked us what we thought or if we had a, any input before the 11th hour, before public hearing, we certainly could have had that discussion with him or let him know how we feel or ask questions of how this Warren article could go about. So I'm probably saving us a lot of time. By now, if somebody didn't want to hear us, they've tuned off. They've shut the TV off and they're watching something else. I've been looking right? for the switch myself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but all 15 of us could get up at deliberative and talk about this, this article all night. Good. in a roundabout so whenever you want <laughs> we're having it open in public right now and letting people know how we feel about this Warren article and I'm sorry Mike I took some of your time but Madam Chair, can I just what? I understand your comments you just made and if they would have come to us and if they would have they don't have to they don't mm -hmm. have right. to they don't have to they're the public mm -hmm. That's right. They're our bosses. All right. So they don't have to come to us on bended knee and say, may I put in a Warren article right. that you may not be for. They don't have to. So I don't know why we're even, why and we're it doing even, it. It isn't up to us to question their exactly. motives. Exactly. They have every forth. right to do it. I don't know why we are picking out one budget article I think I, made, I think I made it very we're, clear. We're, we're offended by this because they didn't come and no. ask us. We certainly are entitled to our opinion. Well, that's what I'm offering you to have. And the deliberative session, I think, is the place to do that, not here. Michael. Uh, yes, Madam Chairman. I uh, looked at this and I thought about it for a couple of seconds. And the first time I got into it, the person I was talking to about it, I said, we can't have seven. That'll add up to an even number. Right. That won't work. 
five to five, then we do five to five. It could, it could go on like that all night or days or months, whatever. That's not a good number. Okay, that's what I'm going to say to start with. The second point that I was bad mouth on that, my concern about the number after that, I went on to thinking about the budget committee. And over the years, I've always thought that possibly a little less would be better. But then again, since I've been around for a while, and I celebrated my three times an antique birthday the other day, so I've been around for a while. I've been in Hampton longer than most of you people have been alive. So I think that what I'm trying to say is, if we reduce the number, we will reduce the people representing the, the, the uh, legislative yeah. body, yeah. okay? So by reducing it, each person would have less influence in relation to legislative body or vice versa. I don't know how you want to slice that. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is, in relation to legislative body, it appears to me, based on this last year activities, and this is an opinion you can all disregard if you want, the legislative body's been left out a lot this last year. And I mean that seriously. And uh, so I think the more we have and the more we can speak up, and I've never been afraid to speak my mind, the more we can speak up, the better off everybody is. Because you really know how people feel when they, feel they can say what they want to say. You have 15 people, three that we have to put up with, and uh, out of that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, but you, uh, you use a gentler offensive term. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, putting that joke aside, I think when you have 15 people inputting into uh, how the budget could go and all the money, I think that's good because you hear from a whole lot of different people. Ever since I've been on the budget, which was just about 15, uh, I mean around 10 or 12 years ago, I've always enjoyed hearing somebody else's point of view because I love to argue with people. I like to discuss things. Right or wrong, I might even take the wrong position just to see why they feel they way, that, the way they do. I've done that many times no with a way. couple of people I've heard that I know really well in town. I've taken the wrong side of it just to see why they felt the way I did. So I think we 15 is a good number. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Yeah. Danny? At times this year, I've almost wished there were less members on the committee. But I mean, you survived. You managed to keep the, the committee moving. As long as the members have voted at large, I see no reason to change it. You know, at some point, if we start <coughs> electing people from precincts or wards, actually, when you think about it, the bulk of the budget committee is made up of the beach people who live at the beach. You know, we're the same. I mean, we're, we're all the same, though. Yeah. It's all one town. <laughs> <laughs> we have good discussions. It's all one town. Sometimes Is that because most of us are from the beach? <laughs> <laughs> Could be. <coughs> are we stuck with them? used too? to be that <laughs> Thank you, Sonny. Maybe not on the east David? Side I would like to compare our committee to the State House, our sausage factory, as so eloquently put. Um, over a thousand How did bills. You offend everybody. Over a thousand bills go hey, through. Hey, fair treatment for all. <laughs> over a thousand bills go through the state every year, and everyone is heard. And there's no way in hell that every person could know all there is to know about every issue that there is. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they turn it all into committees, twenty some odd committees, and those people spend months going over the minutia that all of us do in this room. And what that committee does is it comes with a recommendation to the whole body of 400 representatives. And if you have a committee that was 20 to 2, chances are they did their homework. You're going to go with whatever they recommended. Um, the town needs this budget committee. Um, you know, it was formed in 1954. The older I get, the wiser I realize our forefathers and foremothers were. Um, you need it for no other reason than it's, it's a catch basin to make sure somebody else <coughs> isn't abusing their power. Yeah. It can be painful at time, as we've all experienced. And although I have disagreed with people in this room, I have never doubted their intention or their sincerity and that the best interests of the town is what they really wanted. Um, so 
to me, without a doubt, this committee needs to exist. It's painful. I don't think the average citizen realizes how much time the members of this committee put in. Um, and quite frankly, at 11 o'clock at night, I've about had it, and I know the rest of you have too. That's the disadvantage of the size of our committee. Um, but certainly there is a, a value in this. I would, however, be willing to reduce it, and I don't know what the number is. Um, I, I think to the taxpayer of the town of Hamden, to keep us the way we are is probably the best for them. Um, the problem is, you know, as, as we started talking on that side of the room, by the time it gets over here, it's, it's like you've lost your, your yeah. energy. I don't know if that's Mojo. the right word. <laughs> um, and when we do that with every single issue, um, maybe we could form our own subcommittees. And there could be some of us that are more focused on certain departments than others. They would have to come back and get the overall vote. I don't know. Um, something to consider. But as was said, that person had a right to bring that. Any member of the town of Hampton has a right to bring that before us. Um, but we should certainly have the most input as to how we should be structured. So thank you. Yes, thank you. You know, this is my third year here, <coughs> and I'll, I'm up for re-election. When I first ran for election, people asked me, do you know what you're getting yourself into? <laughs> <laughs> no. I kind of knew because, to be honest with you, I've been in town all my life, and I've always, I've always watched the meetings, whether it's a selectman meeting or budget committee meetings, and I'm, and suppose you can you know, contest, I've seen some really contentious meetings with the budget and selectmen. Yeah. But, I wanted to serve my town. I had the time to do it. I no longer travel for work like I used to do. But in the same token, my, my past work as a, as a project foreman for a big electrical job, we had three meetings a week with seven to nine people. And we were discussing millions and millions of dollars like this. But our meetings never, never, never lasted like these meetings do. <laughs> they just didn't. I mean, everybody could see, everybody agreed with things. I, mean, I understand people disagreeing with stuff like that, but I, I think we should be reduced. Same thing, but I don't know by what number. I've been accused of some other townspeople. I don't speak up the three years I've been here. But in the same token, I don't speak up because when it starts around, by the time it gets to this side, my questions have been answered. So I, I don't, you know... And I have to, you know, fight against that when people say I don't speak up. So I just, I think it should be reduced by, by what? I have no idea. And it may take a while for some, have some kind of committee or something to, to do that, to come up with a, a reasonable number. But for now, I don't agree with this. Mm -hmm. so. <clears throat> Thank you. I think that's where my beginning and, my, and it's a good ending to come to in that we need a little bit more work on it to decide. And I think that Dave brought us to a, a good ending point on the meeting, too. For those of you who've been on this committee for a number of years, um, and Mike, I'm sure you will remember, because we started, Mary Louise, I know you remember, we did have subcommittees, very effectual subcommittees, as a matter of fact, that goes back before SAU 90 was SAU 22. 21, I'm sorry. And we that budget was so overwhelming that we did form a very hardworking um, subcommittee on education and worked through the summer mm -hmm. on that. And just as two of you saying down there, we came back and we had very little discussion. People wonder today why we say very little about the schools. It had to do during a four-year period that we had that subcommittee that we put it all together, came back and put it in a synopsis that everybody could understand. So you didn't have to drill into it. This year we tried to take a, a different move when there wasn't a lot of spirit in the room to do subcommittees. As you remember, we threw that out last March. And instead we went to the questions, the written questions, submit them. They were submitted to the department heads. Um, unedited. They went as was written. And 
see how that would work to try to cut <coughs> down. Well, it, it did, and it, it didn't at the same time, but it was a thorough process. It included everybody and anybody who wanted to forward the questions. The department heads came back to me and said they liked that because they could prepare for what presumably we would ask. Back to the drawing board. By the next meeting, um, well, next meeting will still be here. By the next meeting, we may want to start to formulate where those who will still be here for the newcomers um, in the next round will bring this to. So give some thought work on that, as right now we are still 15 members strong. And regardless of if you're seven members strong at the end of election in March, how you'll go forward with this. I mean, we're a work in progress all the time, and sometimes we have to adapt. Sometimes w there's a lot of information out there. This year there wasn't a lot, so we had to inform people and take a little bit longer. And with all due respect, I know I'm long-winded and say a lot, but you're all entitled to say something, too. And the process still is not perfect. We still can't give everybody an amount of time that they would truly like on every subject. But let's try to come up with something that might be better than what we had yesterday, in fairness. Okay? Um, there's a... I have Tim and I have Jerry that want to go over a couple of things. It's not on the agenda, but it was on um, the encumbrances. And I think it's relevant if anybody has a question, not a two-way, but a question that needs to be answered. And Mary Louise, your question would be? I, I just want to share something with you on revenues when you guys are through. Okay. So I'll let Tim go first sure. and then Jerry. Thank you, everyone. We, we received from Christy uh, the day after the public hearing an email, which was a copy of the budget in PDF form. And then we also were handed the night prior at the public hearing a purchase order report. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted to know was <coughs> the relationship between this purchase order report and that PDF that you sent the following day. In other words, I assume these were checks that were cut that represented three hundred thousand dollars on this purchase order report from uh, January ten. Excuse me. Yeah, January ten. And the PDF I sent the next day was what? This was the list of the encumbrances. P.O. I sent the, the, the purchase orders. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you handed them out at the public hearing. The meeting at the public hearing. I did. Oh, someone handed it out. It landed on my thing. So. Uh, I, I read it uh, over the weekend, and I noticed the uh, budget you sent out on January 15, and I'm wondering if the cost for these $300,000 is reflected in the PDF document that you sent out on 115. Is the PDF document that I sent out on 115 the budget? Yes. I don't know what document you're referring to that I sent out on 115. So the subject is copy of the budget, and that's what it was. Okay. Uh, the PDF of the. These are the. This is the ending purchase orders for 2014. The ending encumbrances that we had. Some of them have probably been paid since you received that, and others have not. So not all of these have been paid. My guess is that all of those have not been paid. Okay. What I'm curious about is the the effect on the actuals that are reported on the document you mailed out to us. That's basically what it comes down to. The actuals were not updated on that. Those um, were not in those actuals. Okay. So the answer is no. Thank you. You're clearing out the balance. I have my, my end of year actuals are not finalized yet. Mm -hmm. Can you give us some idea on when the end of year will be finalized? I'm hoping this week. Okay. Thank you. And Jerry? Yeah. I had three three things that I, sh I, I looked at. the old, I, These POs were placed in the last month or two, right? The majority November, of the ones on this list. Yeah, now. November, December, primarily, mm -hmm. which is is typical. I mean, I understand. We tried know, to you, clear out the older yeah, ones. Yeah, you hold it off to the end of the year to make your purchases. Mm -hmm. But I had a couple of questions because mm -hmm. I remember going through the budgets, and I I re, we I remember us as a committee, we as a committee, recommending that we should spend the O fourteen excess in certain areas, and I remember the areas, so that we would mitigate O fifteen budget mm -hmm. impact. And I'm seeing on here that we did that in a few places. I see, and I think I see. For instance, it looks to me like uh, 
bunker coats, bunker pants, knee reinforcement boots, gloves, hoods, amounted to, you know, something like 10 grand, uh, were purchased. Now, I don't know if that's for fire or police. That's but, fire. fire. Yeah, and I know he was requesting this in his 2015 budget. So if we spent 2014 excess into to buy these things, uh, I'm afraid that we're... No. That money's in the O15 budget as well. No. no, it is because he has to do this in stages, Jerry. Mm -hmm. He's not replacing the whole department's turnout gear at once. He explained that he does it like every like, That's right. third year. Right. But I think he had that he amount. Someone. But it's piecemeal. I, mean, I think he had no. a goodly amount of money in that. That's O15 he's, he's, budget. He needs it to replace the turnout gear. That's why he doesn't all do it at one time. That's right. Another area that I saw, well, I'm hearing that, but I mean, without going into line detail, and it for, this is what I mean, by having a further discussion on it, I'm not sold on this, what you said, Mary Louise. Well, then I sorry, see Ben uniforms here, new hire uniform equipment. That's yes. on here for $10,000. I think that might be police, I don't know. And I remember that the Rich Sawyer was in here asking for part-time special uniforms. Yes. So is this that expenditure? Now we got that same the expenditure. The new effort? hires have to be outfitted. No, we're just asking if that was. Yes. Well, that, that was the budget, though. No, no. Because he's going to have new classes, uh, we hope, of special police officers in 2015. We hope we have them every and single does year. Does that you, you still have to accommodate. You know, they don't all wear the same size uniform, Jerry. <laughs> It looks awful suspicious to me, though. It really well, I'm sorry it looks suspicious. It, look, it looks to me isn't. like some of the comments we had made were utilized, but 015 may not have been mitigated. Well, you have continuing expenses in departments, right. period. And then I see the town clerk office renovation, which I'm not sure what that is, $10,000 or $12,000. May, may I ask what that is? It was the new desks and the new cabinets that were put in the town office to replace the old garbage that was in there. If town you go to the town clerk for your registration, the rebuilding of you the will office. see the new office. Was that a new office we built upstairs? No, it's the new office that the town clerk occupies. But they actually have counters and and well, drawers and facilities yeah. that they can use now. It's all uniform and well structured. Christy, where will we see the expenses? for the new office upstairs? That was in the building maintenance. That was in building maintenance? Mm-hmm. You're talking about assistant town manager? Yeah. I have one question to answer about Jerry's question, Madam Chairman. I'm sorry? I have to give a further answer to Jerry's question. Certainly. We put a hold on the, on the finishing of the town clerk's facilities to see what the budget would look like at the end of the year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whether or not we could afford to finish, and those funds were available to finish. Yeah, that's that's somewhat typical. Okay. Yeah. Now, there's one yeah, other item is. here. Refinishing the floor beach station and refinishing the floor, floor town station. That was in his budget in 015, under maintenance. And we've spent $9,000 here at the end of December. So again, I have my suspicions that we expended money in 014 at the end of 014. Uh, but Jerry, that was our recommendation. And that was Not our recommendation. That was our recommendation. But, did, but the mitigation of 015, I have a suspicion, was never taken. Okay. But for when we, we had requested that if there was money left in the budget from 2014, right. that the things that could be purchased out of the 2014 budget be purchased. Right. But at the okay. same time, we said... Let's mitigate the 015, let's further mitigate 015 proposal requests. So here the money looks to be spent. I'm going to go back and look at the line items again before the deliberative session. But I think the bottom line, too, is that the department's got some of the things that they needed. And the money for the signal at the fire station at the beach was paid out I of the year end. That it was? Okay, that was no. my question. $24,500, yeah. and, that, that and that's totally paid. That was pulled. Yeah. Pulled out, right. Quite honestly, I think that was a waste of twenty-five thousand. I think people would have voted for that Warren article regardless, oh, you but should I won't have get it into it. In the budget. Um, That's all I have to say on that. All right. Okay. Um, actually, I was going to ask about the light, but you know, I've heard comments <laughs> about us having recommended them spending as much as they can from all fourteen to reduce the fifteen budget. Yes. And you're challenging whether the fifteen budget was actually reduced in reflection exactly. of that spending. Correct? Right. Okay. And I also want to point out that while I agree that it's generally a good idea to do, 
I don't think it's exactly accurate that we as a committee did that. We didn't take any vote on that. There were several members of the committee that urged it. Uh, I agree with you. Okay. Then. All right. And that's all I have to say. I don't think we voted on that. No. Yeah. I didn't say vote. I know you did. I just... Just want to make that clear. Thank you. I agree. You did not say that. Yes. I was just making it clear, too. We discussed it and recommended right. Some of us. Did, yeah. Madam Chair, could I ask one question regarding this? I looked at this at home the other day, and um, what would 65, por 65 5 by 7 portraits, what would that be? I couldn't, for the life of me, I was thinking, well, if it's... That's for the Miss Hampton contest. No. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> it's on. Um, it's on page four. It's. It's the second from the bottom. It says Memory Studio, sixty-five portraits, five by seven, sixty-five dollars, in each, and it came to nine hundred and seventy-five dollars. Oh, is that the, the annual report? Mm. I might be giving yeah. out signed autograph pictures. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is? Oh, okay. Good, good, Jim. Very good. We can make some money doing that. You know, during our Halloween meeting. <laughs> I just, it was just, a, when I saw that at home, I thought, what would, why would we need, you know, what, I just couldn't figure out what that would be. Five by seven, that's a pretty good size. Yeah, if, they, if they're of us, they should be seven by nine, at least. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right, let's. Do you I, it's just a Fred, question. Yeah, before we <laughs> lose it up here, I don't know. It's probably a very simple answer. We, we we do keep in the personnel file, and, and oh. we do keep a picture of all the employees. Okay. That we have a good quality picture. Thank good. you. Uh, and, and that's both police and fire. Thank good you. That's, the, that's all I needed to know. Right. Thank Are you. Are we very storing much. those what? digitally as well, Fred? I don't believe yet we're storing them digitally, but we're trying to record everything digitally as well. Good. Good. Thank you. Okay. Good question. All um, right. Before you proceed, because I really would like to take just a couple of minutes with the committee. I'm not going to keep you here till 11 on the revenues, because I really. Oh, the revenues. Yes. Okay. Sure. Okay. Um, one of the big problems we have as a community, and I discussed briefly with Representative Wood earlier this evening. Uh, bless his heart, uh, being brave, going up to Concord. We are being crippled by the state of New Hampshire. Part of your household budget, just like the town budget, is expenditures and revenues. If you don't bring in enough money to support your lifestyle, you're in trouble. We have the same problem as a community, and it's getting worse because of what the state is doing. I don't know how many of you have had a chance to look at this. I'm going to give it to Eileen so she can duplicate some of the pages for you. And I'll just add to that. We I will make a copy for each and every single person okay, here. Anyway. Last year, uh, Phil Bean asked the, if the departments would, would get together an idea of the monetary value of the town services regarding related to the state park, related to Hampton Beach yeah. State Park. It's a huge expense to this town that's coming off the backs of the taxpayers. You're all worried about the budget and the spending in the budget. Well, a lot of the spending in the budget goes to this goes to the state without reimbursement, gentlemen. In addition, the SRF funds, those are the uh, state revolving fund monies that have been granted the, to, to the towns, and Hampton has taken advantage of this for years, to construct um, sewer lines and, and relate to repairs of the wastewater treatment plant. We are supposed to get a 20% grant back from the state of New Hampshire, and I think the feds are involved in that uh, as well, after the completion of our projects. And we have run, for example, the Mill Road, Little River Road sewer. But we've spent a lot of money on, on sewer construction projects and need to spend more. The state of New Hampshire released, I think it was 200000 rounded off this past year in 2014. And now they've put a total freeze. They still owe the town of Hampton $1.8 million. What would $1.8 million more in our revenue account look like for us this year to offset? In addition to that, and, and this, is, this is really scary on the, the money we put into the uh, state, the rooms and meals tax. If we were the only permanent residents of the town of Hampton sitting right here, we get the it's same. irrelevant yeah, we get the same because your, your taxes are predicated on your taxable property, and we are increasing by a tremendous amount the taxable property values in this town. 
And as you've seen the, uh, heard the assessing officer talk about the reval, which by state law happens every five years, that should level out and equalize some of the situation with taxes in this town. The newer builds, the more expensive builds, the big condominium developments, et cetera, should be absorbing some of the tax. So when Jerry's saying if you pass this budget, your property on your little $350,000 lot will go up by $600 a year is not really accurate. <clears throat> the big bills are going to absorb some of that and spread the um, tax burden a little better. But to for the state of New Hampshire to pay us Rooms and, and meals tax, it was $672,000 uh, oh, okay. this year. Look at the volume of business we have in the summer. Fred mentioned, I'm not going to mention it, I think I know what business he was referring to. But there's a, a, one business, one business in this town. And then when we're not even talking about all of the businesses at the beach and, and uptown, generated that much revenue in a year. State, we for are state being taxes to the state. Yeah, we are just being that much sure revenue. That much revenue for to the, the state. state. They yes. paid that Thank you. And we are we are crippled here with not deriving revenue that we should be getting in. Uh, in all fairness, um, what was the amount we told the state? That we're, be, we're being killed. Then the retirement system, which the state legislature set up. They failed to monitor it. They failed to hire some kind of an accounting firm to keep track of it. The state of New Hampshire has now dumped, dumped the retirement funding on the town and the employees. The state of New Hampshire is out of the picture. I think I mentioned to Fred that I wondered if the towns could get together and go to court and sue the state, literally. So we are being shorted out um, tremendous, tremendous amounts of revenue which would help the taxpayers of this town and would hopefully not have us sweating every year on what we can afford for services. The need for services at the state park is, is tremendous, tremendous. The, this is July 2013, uh, solid waste and sewer. Uh, let's see, there's $3,096 there. Uh, the public works budget here, the annual, total annual of uh, Town of Hampton support, $7,530,506. Supporting the state of New Hampshire. Hmm. And I know because I hear from the chairman that we have a hard time seeing police personnel uptown because of the demands at the beach. If any of you watched the Selectman's meeting a week ago when Chief Sawyer was in talking about the heroin problem in this town, talking about the need for law enforcement officers in this town, and a great deal of that need is driven by what's happening at the state. This, in fact, bless, and I gave Mr. Ladd a copy of a petition or a complaint that the Selectman received from residents of Boston Avenue. We can't police our neighborhoods. We can't enforce traffic and, and parking ordinances. We are at the mercy of what's being created by tourism and that state park. And it's killing us. Madam, it's killing Madam us. Chairman, yeah. so just so well, you, where are we going with this? This is not on the I'm ballot. Just, you know, but, with all due respect but it's, to Mary Louise, it's revenue. It's she revenue. wanted, to, make talk it brief, about, then? Well, she wanted to talk about revenue. Thank and you. And unfortunately, it's probably prudent that you're here. We cannot affect a lot of the areas that you're talking about as a committee. What we are left to do is deal with the taxpayer's pocketbook yeah. as it exists, yeah. knowing all of that. Yeah. And you're right about police. To a person, I think we overwhelmingly approved of the Warren article that is on the ballot for part-time training, a second round of part-time training. We certainly support our fire and our police department. Um, but there are things that we cannot do in us. this body. But 
Ms. The Lockett Board of can. Selectmen can forge ahead with that. Our yeah. state representative can forge ahead I with that. I dumped on poor Representative but Wood. Madam Chair, I yes, sir. want to, to respond to that. Yes, um, Representative Wood. I would love to sit down with you, Mary Louise, to discuss Anytime. those issues. Um, remember I talked about committees a little while ago? Mm -hmm. I am now on the Public Works and Highways Commission. So you've narrowed that 400 down into a little bit. As, as far as the amount that Hampton gets, but frankly, we are not getting our fair share. The oh. problem is you've got 400 people voting on it. And I don't know how it, it started. I'm a newbie on this. Mm -hmm. um, but Senator Stiles is, is yep. working on that. But rather than tie up this whole board, I think I'll, I'll meet with you this week if you'd like. Yeah, um, no problem. Okay, thank you. But it's killing us. It really is. Can I get a point Joe? of clarification on that seven million? Is that seven million that we expend in it's, June, July, and it's August? It's listed, my dear, in the in the. I'll have this. I'm going to make. I'm going to make a copy, and, and probably gonna gonna a copy. better discussion can be had. We, you might want to entertain yeah. talking more Just on it for your in another session, so you can actually right. see the figures okay. compiled by the uh, department. Joan, how many? Moving on, how many? Outstanding sets of minutes do we have? We just got one, and the one before January 8th, and the public hearing on the 14th. Okay. Um, I'm going to hold those till February if it's okay with everybody, because we haven't had enough time to even look at them. I know I haven't. Um, one, one thing, yeah. please, Madam Chairman, before everybody runs away. Tomorrow, the Hampton Beach Village District is having a um, budget workshop. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Senator when, one meeting, please. One, one meeting over here, please. When, when will this budget committee be taking that on to? Uh, oh, we need the date on that. We need a schedule. Yeah. yeah. I, I, oh, that's the, uh, the, the budget. Third, yeah. The VD well, budget. Well, yeah. Third the, the, Tuesday in February. That's the precinct. Yeah. When we do the precinct. precinct. So next meeting. Okay. Yeah. So February. please. Whatever we have that a date. date is. Third Tuesday in February. Tuesday. The next meeting. And uh, do you know the date of your public hearing? Not until March. Uh, Mr. Rainier has that. I gave him a paper okay. tonight. That's <laughs> March, Richard, right? Yeah. Um, and Richard, a reminder that you need to post Usually that the last, day. last Friday in March and print it in the paper. Our meeting is March 27th, the annual meeting. <coughs> I'm sorry? Excuse the me. The annual meeting for the Hampton Beach Village District is March 27th. Which is a Friday night. Okay. Yep. Okay. So you might want to well, think so about posting it in the good. paper. Well, we just got now. Okay, in um, by maybe uh, the first of, of March. Definitely, you might, you might want to mention Mr. Ladd happened to leave the room for a minute, but when he returned, Commissioner Ladd. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll just I'll mention to him that that's when we'll be doing that, please. Madam Chairman, I'd like to ask for a couple of documents from the yeah. town too. Should we do that now, or when you finish this yeah. point? Yeah. Joan, can you put these requests in the minutes? You, which, what are you requesting, Michael? I'd like to have the copy of the TAs, the tentative agreements, and I'd also like to have the contracts that the town has made for the last three years. For how long? Last three years. Three years? Mm -hmm. the con you mean the contracts uh, on what, Mike? On, you mean like the employee, MOUs? Employee, employee, employee contracts, oh, employee like contract. manager, etc. Three-year contracts and the... Uh, TAs because we didn't get the TAs and it was awful hard for us to look at the numbers when we didn't have them on that. For police and fire? And stuff. Yeah. That would have been, okay. and have ha those been completed yet, Fred? They have uh, not been completed. That made my desk. Let's put that one. Okay, so you will inform us when they are done. Right there, make my desk. They'll be on the web. Can Thank we you. have that available to us before the delivery session, Fred? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not the one preparing them, so I can't ask the question. Should we make it a 91A then? To make sure we do have it in five days because we want it before the deliberation session you can make a 91 i don't think a committee can make a 91 a request i don't know that no, you can either you can make a 91 a if you want as should a i make a 91 a if you can't deliver it before the deliberation session I, that's don't give it to me because i'm not the one preparing it i have to find out who is yeah you don't have any idea who's preparing the ta no, for i it? don't it's outside my jurisdiction because so. i think the warren article says an individual can re request. I don't yeah. think a, a group or committee can. I'm not sure on that. I go back. A group of that. individuals can. By now, I should have it memorized. So I should make a 91A tomorrow, then. Okay. Go so ahead. Phil Bean, he's the chairman. Go ahead. Whatever. You've got, you've got okay. Madam Chair, what's the date of our next meeting? 
February the 17th. Third February. Tuesday in February, Madam Chair. Yep, we're back to regular schedule. Third Tuesday yes. of every month. No special meetings, but do show up at deliberative right. session. The is the next agenda yes. the precinct yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Our next meet, well, our next uh, get-together will be at the deliberative session. Yep. And please remember that you are all needed for a vote at the end of the session. That's right. We all have to be yes. there. Madam Chair, as you know, and as members of the committee know, we have HamptonBud.com out there, which has not been refreshed since the thing became a bit controversial. I didn't want to add to that controversy during our budget workshops, so nothing has been refreshed there. It will be refreshed in the next few days. Joan has agreed to work with me in, in consultation of, of, uh, of that uh, refreshment, if you will, over the next few days. And, uh, so I just wanted you guys to know that. Secondly, I want to make note that it's now 8.50, and so there's still time to get a burger and beer at the Old Salt, and I move to adjourn. I'll second that. All those in favor. You could also go home and watch, watch the, the president's uh, State of the Union. That's for the plane. <laughs> <laughs> the Union. I don't know. Maybe.